Well, welcome back, folks. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a change from what I had shared with you, I think, in my last video, and that is working on or modifying this aftermarket uh, taillight bracket to fit on or mount properly on the original Suzuki fender mount here. And if you recall in that last video, I mentioned that these mounting holes right here where my fingers are, get this turned around for you, right here, are not spaced correctly to match the original plate here and to line up with the mounting holes on that taillight bracket. So I think I'd said that I would do that off camera another time, but I've changed my mind. I'm going to do that in this video today. So I'm going to actually take you through and record the process of really modifying this aftermarket uh, plate to line up with the holes, uh, the original holes in the Suzuki Fender bracket. Now, let me share my thinking on this a little bit with you. Uh, this flange right here I'm pointing to with my index fingers is, with the two holes, is the one I'm referring to. So I have to modify that bracket to line up with these two holes. Uh, I would never ever modify this bracket to match the new aftermarket plate. Uh, why would you do that? This is a relatively rare, it's in very part, it's in very good condition except for that uh, brazing that we talked about previously, and I'll come back to that in another video. That won't be part of this conversation. But I would never think about modifying an OEM part like this to modify a relatively inexpensive aftermarket piece. So this would be left alone uh, in, intact as it was uh, made by the factory. Uh, these are much harder to get than that uh, aftermarket piece as I just alluded to. So. This video is going to be about, uh, you know, moving these holes so that I can use uh, washers, uh, nuts, and screws as Suzuki originally did to mount this on that fender bracket, and I'm going to take you through those steps. So why don't we go ahead and reset up over here a little bit, uh, the camera and the equipment, and I'll explain exactly what I'm going to do, and then we'll go ahead and complete the You process. can see I've got the new backer plate all prepared. I've got it masked. And the reason I do that is to avoid damaging the part if I slip with a tool or something goes wrong. So I got this masked up and the pigtail wrapped and taped down and out of the way just for obvious reasons. I don't want this flopping around when I'm trying to work on the part. Again, to reiterate, these holes right here have to be moved out a total of 10 millimeter or five millimeters per side. These are 50 millimeter uh, center to center. The original Suzuki part here is approximately 60 millimeter center to center. That's where that five millimeter, five millimeter per side comes from. First thing I'm going to do is grind off these little tabs on the back that are threaded. That was used for the original mounting a method that the uh, manufacturer of this plate intended. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to emulate what Suzuki did. You can see there is no threaded portion here. I'm just going to Grind these off and use uh, screws, washers, and nuts like Suzuki did. So I'm going to grind those off to get them out of the way. Then I'm going to drill a clearance hole with this drill, which matches the, the milling bit right here. This is a Dremel milling bit. These are approximately the same size. This is 5.25 millimeter. So I'm going to pass this through drill it out, and then I'll have a hole that's approximately 5.25. It's close enough for my purposes. Then what I'll do is put this drill into the hole like this, and I will take half of the drill uh, diameter, which is 2.625, add it to the five millimeter. I have to move this over, and that gives me a total of 7.63 millimeter. So then I will set my caliper, caliper at 7.63 millimeter, like that. I hope you can see it. I will come over like this. I will put a little bluing die on this tape, and I will scribe like this and like this. That will give me my outbound distance here. Then I will eyeball the center here just for, for uh, general purposes when I'm using the Dremel with the milling bit. Put this in, of course, in a vise. The whole thing will be fixed during this entire process. And I'm just simply going to take this milling bit and come over to the line I scribe like that. And we should be about there. So that, that's my general approach. So I'm going to put this in the vise. 
probably going to locate it this way because I can get more, I think, a better grip, secure it easier this way than I could this way, though I might experiment a little bit, see which is which. I don't want this moving when I'm working on, of course, especially with this uh, milling bit. Not a complicated process, but uh, I, want, I want to make it as, as reasonably precise as I can. So let me go ahead and put this in a vise, set up the camera, and we'll get on with it. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use this drill bit like that and like that to approximately mark the center line of the current holes. And before I can do that, I'm going to take a little bit of this layout die that I use primarily for machining and put a little bit here on the tape. And I could put it on the metal. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt that chrome in the least. But again, I'm using the tape to protect the finish. So I've got to let that dry for a, for a few minutes and I'll come back and use my caliper and this drill bit and we'll mark the line of how far out I need to mill that new hole or enlarge that A few minutes hole. later, the layout die has dried. I've got my caliper set to 7.63 millimeter. And I'm going to hold this drill as vertical as I can. Again, I'm not making parts for the next moon launch, so high precision is not critical here. If I was concerned about that, I would set this up in the mill and, and use my high precision measuring capabilities over there to lay it out. But <clears throat> I'm not concerned about it that much, so I'm just going to make a mark. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I can. And there is a mark right there. And I'll do the same thing over here on this side. There's a mark right there, and there's a mark right there. <clears throat> that will be used to guide the milling bit right here so that I can visually see how far over I've got to go. Now I've been debating in my mind, in my mind whether I should fixture this like this or turn it vertical. I can certainly see it a lot better this way but I am a little concerned about the rigidity of the setup because I can't clamp it too tight because I'm going to damage this metal. But I think what I'm going to try to do, I'll start it this way and see carefully if it works. And if I'm concerned about it moving, then I'll stop and reorient it to the vertical position.
I had to put hearing protection on because that was so loud. That's uh, just about right. Looks like it just about There's the up. finished part. Took a round file and just broke the edges to make sure that there was no burrs. You see there on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the bracket right here. And there's the finished part. Well, semi-finished. I have still more work to do. You can see there approximately how much I moved it. Again, about five millimeters per side. That side, can't even tell anything was done, of course. I just uh, used the temporary hardware that came with the bracket originally. I'll use Suzuki hardware when the time comes to mount it up permanently. Still have more work to do, of course, on this pigtail. It's too short, I can tell you that already. And I'll have to either splice on the original or come up with some other means of extending this pigtail. That'll be later on. I'll deal with that. But this video is about just modifying, easily modifying this uh, plate so they would line up with the original fender bracket like you can see there. And I consider that a success. If you're concerned, by the way, about this raw steel here because I took all the zinc and or chrome off of it, you could uh, seal that with a little clear coat on a brush. You could spray it. You could paint it. There's a lot of things you could do to uh, prevent rust from reoccurring on that, uh, that, that bare steel. So that's not a real problem either. That's going to be it for this video today, folks. Any issues, questions, thoughts, drop me a note. Otherwise, as usual, thanks for watching.